Okay, I actually ended uh, 14.6 a little early. Uh, I should have covered shockwaves and I didn't, so I'm going to cover it here. It will be short. And then I've got a short section on the interference of waves before we get into standing waves. Um, so uh, let's go on with, and, and then for the interference waves of waves, I'm going to show you a, uh, or I'm going to share a little video uh, that I made using two speakers. I discussed that uh, Thursday, and I actually did it, and uh, you can see the effect. Uh, that last slide is from the discussing the Doppler effect, and here we go with the uh, the shock wave. Uh, now, when what happens when the source exceeds the speed of sound? Uh, we can see the envelope of the wave fronts forms a cone with a ha with half angle of sine theta equal to uh, v divided by v sub s. Now, v sub s, the velocity of the source divided by the velocity of sound is known as the Mach number. So, uh, you know, Mach 2 is twice the speed of sound. Mach 3 is three times the speed of sound. If you do exceed the speed of sound, you, you end up with sonic booms. When I was a kid growing up near Kelly uh, Air Force Base, um, you would hear sonic booms quite regularly, but apparently after a while they, they uh, made military airplanes not uh, exceed the um, speed of sound when they were over uh, populated areas because you don't hear them anymore. Um, but the, the sonic booms were, yeah, they were very common uh, back when I was a, when I was a kid. Um, so you can see that the, the sine of theta, if you look at theta, is half of the angle of this, this cone uh, v, v sub t um, is is the the uh, the one going up from the the center line to uh, one of the envelopes of the circles, and then v source times t is the basically the hypotenuse of of the of theta of the triangle made up uh, by uh, v t uh, v s t and the the side of the the envelope um so sine of theta is equal to v divided by uh, vs and again the uh the mach number is v is the reciprocal vs over uh v because you know sine of theta is always going to be between minus one and one it's never going to exceed that whereas the mach number does exceed it you can get uh, Mach 2, I think even Mach 3, and when, you know, when we propel rockets into the uh, atmosphere, they, they can exceed even that. Okay, uh, and here's a, here's a shock wave on a speedboat that's exceeding the speed of the waves that, uh, the speed of the natural waves in the, in the water. Um, and when you, when you, uh, you can see the large pressure variations in the shock wave condenses water vapor in the droplets. I've actually seen this, um, uh, just on the, not from a, a, uh, um, the sonic boom, but just on the wings of the F-16 turning a real hard right. Southwest Research is uh, right right near Kelly Air Force Base and seen a, a uh, F-16 turn uh, very strong. You can see the little vapors that appear on the wings. You get a shock wave both at the nose and at the, uh, uh, at the tail. And that's, you can see it just there at the canopy where the pilot is and then against the, uh, uh, the back of the, uh, the jet there. Uh, those are the shock waves from the, uh, it exceeding the speed of sound. Okay, now let's get into interference of sound sound waves. This is actually 14.7. It's a short little section. Um, so you have a sound wave from the speaker S enters the tube and splits into two parts at point P. Uh, the two waves combine at the opposite side and are detected at the receiver. Um, 
Now, what if you were to uh, to lengthen that tube, just kind of like a trombone tube, you know, where you just extend it, you would have uh, constructive interference uh, at R2 minus R1 at uh, intervals of lambda. So at, at n equals zero, of course, that's with them both being lambda. At one lambda, you'd get, con you'd get constructive interference at two and so forth. Now you would get destructive interference uh, if the R1 and R2, uh, R, R2 minus R1, if it were n plus a half lambda. Um, so at, at uh, one half lambda, one and one half lambda, two and one half lambda, you've got, you'll get destructive interference. And what that means is that, that you would actually cancel and you wouldn't hear anything in the, uh, in your ear. And I've got a little video demonstration that will show that. I don't, uh, um, I think, I think that's it for this. So I'm also going to attach, uh, on this same page, I'm going to attach a little video that shows, that demonstrates the destructive interference.